Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Peace Theater. So we are now going to take on the boss of the dungeon, Volvagia. And this is one of my favorite boss fights of the game. It's like the most awesome game of whack-a-mole ever. Um, so, this be a good time. That and I have a love of dragons, so... You know that's in a special place. Here we go. Such a cool boss. And just like that, I'm out of arrows. That's okay. He's not particularly difficult by any stretch. Um, as long as, you know, you're standing in the right place to take him out. There we go. Now, in this round, when he comes out, uh, giant boulders are going to fall. So, you have to switch back to your sword and shield, that way in case you need to block, but for the most part, you just want to run around and avoid the shadows on the ground of the file, the giant falling rocks. Personally, I think this is one of the easier boss battles overall. That's it. <clears throat> Not too difficult. I love his death scene. Such an awesome animation. The giant skull landing at your feet. And becomes your heart piece. <clears throat> no, that was a three minute boss battle. <laughs> if only they all went that quickly. The next one's going to be a tricky. In fact, the next dungeon that we're going to go to is, in my opinion, the hardest of all the dungeons in the game, period. And it is a water dungeon, and in Water dungeons are just notorious for being difficult. And that's a great effect. They really did a good job illustrating the, you know, how everything changed. And now we're back in the Chamber of Sages. So we met the first sage when we came here, and then Surya was our next sage of the Force Temple, and now we learn that Darunia is the sage of the fire temple.
And now we're back in the Death Mountain Crater. Okay, now that we have the hammer, there's a few things we can do while we're here. Um, we're gonna go back. And now our Megaton Hammer can break things, which is cool. And these guys will just sell me stuff, and I don't really need anything that they're going to sell me. I couldn't remember what was in there. And... I'm going to go over here. I'm going to bust down this. I just now realized that the C buttons that correlate with Zelda's lullaby form the Triforce. So our next stop is going to be uh, Zora's Domain. Uh, there's a heart piece I'm going to get while I'm here. Um, real quick while I'm still inside of the mountain here, but our next stop is going to be Zora's Domain. And we can't get there by traditional, well, we can get there by the old-fashioned method. But uh, the world is different as an adult, as we've seen. You know, we saw what the marketplace looked like, and we've seen what, you know, other things have looked like as far as, you know, the amount of devastation and change that has taken place in the last seven years. Um, and Zora's domain is completely frozen over right now. And it's going to be problematic for us. So in order to get in there, we can go the old way, the way that we went the very first time we played this game. And we are going to. But I'm actually going to go to Lake Hylia as our next stop, because there's something there that I need. And now we don't have the fast track down the mountain that we had previously. Um, however, since the mountain is not in as much turmoil, I don't have giant fireballs coming to land on me. And I'm going back to Kakariko Village because I need some arrows, um, and I don't feel like looking for them in the wild necessarily. So we're going to go get some arrows. That was not intended. Good to know the cow is still there after all these years. Poor cow. So I would like to take this opportunity, since we're just doing some running around here, uh, to thank those of you who are still with me now on the 11th episode of this. Uh, and these are half-hour episodes, so if you're still with me after all this, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, tell your friends. Um, and uh, I'm sure, and I know it's already happened because the comments have already begun coming in from people. I know there are times where I inadvertently give misinformation, usually just because I go off the information that I have and I don't do tons of research before, you know, doing anything. Uh, which is probably my fault. However, 
uh, I do appreciate those of you who do at least do take the time in the comments to, you know, correct anything that I might get wrong. Um, okay, now I have arrows. Alright, now we're going to head to Lake Hylia. And the fastest... Eh, this will be faster just to go this way. There's a song I could get right now, but I'm not going to. It, I'll do it later. Alright. Now, to get to Lake Hylia, by this method, and we've been there once before, I don't know if you remember, in the uh, episode where we were trying to get everything together to go towards the uh, first water, first time we go to Zora's Domain. We end up getting a letter in a bottle for Princess Rudo, and that was at Lake Hylia. Um, and Lake Hylia looks a little different now. It's not the cheery place it once was. And the nice thing about having the horse, and we've seen this before, is if you run dead on fences, the horsey will jump. Very useful. And you've seen me get several empty bottles as we've played. Um, and I'm actually... can't do what I was going to here. Uh, yes, I can. Um, there's a total of four bottles. I have three. That's all I'm going to get because the fourth bottle uh, requires more effort than I feel like putting in, if I'm being 100% honest. Um, So there's a thing here where if you shoot an arrow into the sun, you'll get fire arrows, but I'm not going to be able to get them right now. So we're just going to go back to Zora's Domain. But I'm actually standing right on top of where the water temple's going to be. But as you can see, the lake is drained. That's a side effect of what we see happening in Zora's Domain right now, which Zora's Domain is completely frozen over as punishment by the great Ganondorf. Just like he punished the woods and he punished the Gorons, so did he to the Zora. Now one thing I find interesting is that in some of the early Zelda games that came out, um, Zoras were actually enemies, um, and somewhere in the timeline that changed. They were the guys that would pop out of the water and uh, shoot at you as you were trying to like get around in the first Zelda game. Not much has really changed here um, that we can tell. Everything's still pretty much the same. Everything's still in the same place.
Oh look, it's snowing. I guess you could say this level technically has two dungeons um, in the water series. And in the first dungeon we're about to go to. See, everything is frozen over now. Um... And they're all encased in this magical ice. So where we need to go is back here where the great Jabu Jabu was. <clears throat> and as you can see, the great Jabu Jabu is there no more. So where we need to go, this is kind of a tricky bit here, let's uh, go for this while we're at it. If I fall in the water, it's pretty, it can be kind of difficult to get back out of. Uh, so I gotta try to be really careful here. And, oh yeah, got it. jump over to this one, and we're going to jump over to that one, and we're going to jump over here, and over here, and this will take us to the first of two dungeons that we're going to deal with. Um, the reason I mentioned the bottles earlier is because in order to break up the magical ice, I have to get blue flame from inside this cavern, and you capture the blue flame with your bottles. So I'm actually going to have to, sadly, empty all three of my bottles to make this the most efficient run through of it. Actually, the object that I need here is not... Oh. Um, I can't get into the water temple without. Um, and there's actually... There's two things I need to get into the water temple. One is a blue tunic that will allow me to breathe underwater, similar to how the red tunic protected me. And I will need um, the iron boots that will actually hold me down underwater. Um, okay. This is where we get our first bit of blue flame. Uh, stupid ice keys. Where'd you get off to? 
to. Oh, come on. See if I can get him. There we go. Okay. And we're going to fill all three bottles with the blue flame. over there is the dungeon map, but I'm actually not going to get it because I don't want to waste blue flame trying to get it if I don't need to. <clears throat> Something else you can do with those uh, guys that are the, the snow, the ice statues breathing, you know, the ice beam or whatever. Um, is you can't hit you can hit them with your hook shot <coughs> excuse me you can hit them with your hook shot and they'll pull you to them so like if you're trying to cross a gap to where they are or something now with the blue ice or the blue flame excuse me to get rid of the red ice I could go ahead and um, go and thaw out the uh, Zora King, which would give me the blue tunic, but in here is where I get the uh, uh, um, iron boots that I need. So I have to, I do have to see this dungeon through. And this room is probably the hardest room in the whole thing because I can never remember the sequence. This has to go to work. So I have to get all of the silver rupees. Yep, that wasn't it. Let's see, I can jump up here and go ahead and get that one. Alright, let's do... Push that over there. <clears throat> and there's another blue flame thing in this room. So I can refill, because I am going to have to use a blue flame to thaw out one of the rupees. Push this forward. Nope. To get access to that one, I just push this up here and push that over there. this off and get a new one into the room. You'll have to forgive me, I've got a bit of a <clears throat> frog in my throat. We've had some pressure changes in the weather and messing my sinuses all up. Which is probably why my voice sounds deeper than normal. 
You know what, just because it's here. And that sound is annoying. Fill my blue flame here. And there was a shop back in Kakariko Village where I could get uh, the blue flame, but why purchase it when I can get it here for free? And now to get to the exit. Link is incredibly strong. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that. Here we are. That's it. And then we have a nice little cutscene here with Sheik. So I'm going to end this episode in the same spot that I ended the last one um, before the temple. Um, where I'm at the entrance to the temple. But I'm not going to start the uh, temple on this playthrough of this episode. Because we're already at almost 30 minutes. Thank you. 
now we are on our way out. Just like that. So we're going to go back, we're going to thaw out the Zora King, we're also going to thaw out uh, the shop, because it's frozen. I should have two, s two frozen, yep, two blue flames left. Perfect. stop to make here and then we're going to head to Lake Hylia and uh, get going so this is the store and I'm not going to go in and get anything from here I just want to have it in case I need to stop back by here or something or whatever later all right now let me review that song down, right, right, left. Okay. And let's see, we want this and that. And this will warp us to the water temple. sink and breathe underwater. How useful is that? And then we're going to pull this out to open the gate and inside we go. And this is where I'm going to end the episode. Thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you next episode.